Hey there! Happy Tuesday! Thanks for joining me for a craft night with friends. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight, Monday through Friday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, and it's a time that we can relax and craft together. Uh, so I'm back from my trip visiting my parents. Uh, we worked on the Luna Moth yesterday there, and we, oops, we are going to continue it here tonight. So thanks again for joining me. Let's get stitching. All right, here we go tonight. Uh, let me scoot you guys in here. Okay, so I am back. It's so nice to see you guys popping in again. Here is our uh, Luna Moth embroidery. Uh, last night we got our uh, the fishbone stitch done, his little antenna, and we started on the chain stitch for the wings so uh this one i did like a normal forward chain stitch and this one i started doing the reverse chain stitch so that's what we're going to continue tonight to finish his outline here uh, and then let's do the same thing here i'll do like a forward chain stitch here and maybe a reverse chain stitch for for the bottom again but it'd be awesome to get those outlines done so i got my uh my green here again let's get that Hello, uh, All right, so I'm gonna get my 24 inches here, approximately, I'm just estimating. Someone mentioned um, uh, last night that uh, from your fingers to your your elbow is a good length. I'm I'm going a hair more than that, I think. Yeah, just just a little bit. Um, but you don't want to go super duper long. I think the the initial thought at least for me, was to go like super long, then I wouldn't have to change my thread as often, but it does wear away the thread a bit um, just by going through the fabric a bunch of times. Uh, so it is better to do like this shorter, shorter amount. Then it won't knot as much and all that. So I'm just kind of isolating one strand and we are zoop, pulling it out because uh, I am stitching with three strands of embroidery floss. Uh, we could stitch with with six, but you would have like really, really thick lines, which is fine. I think that's perfectly fine, but uh, this kit calls for just three, so we do have to separate the thread. And I just put it back together, run my hand through it, and there we go. All right, grab my needle. I hope everyone had a lovely, lovely uh, day today. All right. Thread in my needle here. Zoop. Um, okay, so let's get going. We left off with uh, the reverse chain stitch. And to start up a reverse chain stitch again is really easy. I'm just gonna weave into the backs of my stitches and then I just start right where I left off. Uh, easy peasy. So, all right, I'm gonna weave in my ends here. So again, I do three three times back and forth. That kind of like locks in my thread. It's almost like tying a long knot. This is my favorite way of um, starting, starting and stopping my stitching. Just uh, I feel like it helps me have a cleaner back and I don't have like a bunch of knots on the back that I keep getting caught on and stuff like that. All right. There we are. So to continue, like I said, continue the, oh, thanks, butterfly child. Uh, to continue the reverse chain stitch here, I'm going to just come up at the next stitch. We are going around a, a, a tight little curve here, so I am going to make a little smaller stitches. Um, but I'm just going to swoop the needle underneath the last stitch. So I'm not even, I'm not even going through the fabric at this point. I'm just swooping. I'm just going underneath the last stitch, both sides of the last stitch, and then going back in the exact same hole I just I just started. And there we go, we have our little teardrop shape, and uh, that is our first um, reverse chain stitch for, for the evening. So I'm gonna keep going. You can actually swoop underneath from either side, it, it doesn't matter at all. I do think this is just like, a great way to do a chain stitch. So it looks just like uh, a normal chain stitch, and we'll show. I'll show you how to do that again. Um, to sometime, or like once we get this guy done, we'll do we'll do this one 
with um, the forward or the, the, you know, just the traditional chain stitch. But if that's giving you trouble, definitely, definitely give this reverse chain stitch a try. The only thing visually different about it is that the stitches are flipped in the opposite direction. So like the teardrop shapes are going up like this. If I'm going in this direction, if I would go this direction and go a forward um, changes like, like here, the, um, just the teardrops are in the opposite direction. So if I, I put like a bunch of rows of these next to each other, then you'd be able to tell the difference, but um, oh, it felt funny, funny there. But other than that, there's no visual dif difference between a forward chain stitch and this reverse chain stitch or a traditional chain stitch in the reverse. Oh, am I doing the body today? Um, uh, I will see where I get. I, I want to do the outlines first, but after I do that, then I think, yeah, I'm going to work on the body. Oh, thanks, Donna. <laughs> Donna likes my nails. I am going on week two. Oh, wait, no. I think I did these on Thursday. Oh, so this is still week one. <laughs> uh, I, they're dip nails, dip acrylic, dip powder, or dip powder, um, I think, which is acrylic, uh, dip powder nails. And... I just started using it a couple months ago and I just love it. <laughs> I love that I don't have to redo my nails um, every two days, two to three days and have my nails break all the time. Like now I feel like my nails are super sturdy uh, with, with the dip powder on and everything. So, and I only have to think about them every uh, two and a half, three weeks or so instead of every two and a half or two, three days. Anywho, that might be a little bit more info on the nails than you wanted. It was a big topic for us uh, a couple months ago when I was trying to figure out what to do. All right, but yeah, I do think I'm going to try and get started on the body today. I do want to uh, just finish the wings, or at least the outline of the wings first. And again, the reasoning for that, well, first of all, I just think it's exciting to, to do the wings. Then we get like this big, pretty green happening right away. But from a technical standpoint, I'm doing the wings first before the body uh, because the wings, like if this was a, a real life, the wings are actually like, like behind the body. You know, they would be on the back of him. So they would be like behind uh, what we can see on the body here. And uh, so I try and mimic um, with the order of stitching, like what's furthest back to what's in front, because then my in front stitches, so like his face and everything would be in front of everything. Then those stitches will visually appear uh, to cross over the things that are behind it. So I think it gives, it's just another little detail to make it feel like the body is in front of the wings and the antenna basically. So. Um, when I'm deciding what to stitch next, I do often um, work with what's farthest back if it was like a real life thing. I mean, obviously in an embroidery, nothing's really, I mean, I'm on, working on, on a flat thing, but um, in real life, the wings would be further back. Such a happy little guy here. Um, well, the pattern, we have the pattern uh, as a digital pattern, as a fabric-only pattern, and as a full kit with all the supplies. Uh, the PDF pattern is the um, most inexpensive. That's $8. And then the uh, full kit with the hoop and the floss and needle, fabric, pre-printed fabric, all that is... Um, $28 and then you get a discount uh, with the embroidery of the month um, with subscriptions and stuff. So it is our embroidery month this month, the Luna Moth, and we're stitching it up this week. All right, I'm going to flip it around uh, to weave in the end. Oh, I thought it was feeling funny. We got a little bit of the fabric. Um, I'm going to trim that off a little piece of the fabric edge 
cotton here. I'm just going to trim that and that's good enough. All right, so I like weaving in the ends um, to, to finish off my thread. And then I'll just use the same thread to start the next wing. I just don't want to jump way over to the next spot. I'm going to weave in and um, start fresh. Uh, this is, I was doing the reverse chain stitch. So I'm going to show you the forward chain stitch again now. Um, oh, I'm just, I think that was three times. I was going to go four or five times. I was just talking and weaving in. Ooh, purple and pink. Donna, that would be a super cute idea. So if you're going to do that, I recommend um, potentially getting the PDF version because then you can, um, I'm going to weave in right here. Then you can just trace or use like a, a stick and stitch um, embroidery stabilizer. You can print directly to that. Um, but then you can like enlarge it or shrink it however you want and then then uh, use whatever colors you want as well. So I think that's kind of the easiest way if you want to change up colors and stuff. Or if you have your own floss, then this still comes with the pre-printed fabric and then you can just use your own floss colors because there are some gorgeous like moths and butterflies and you could kind of easily kind of update this uh, to be that moth. All right, so I'm going to go around this guy here. So now I'm going to do the, um, the forward or traditional... Um, chain stitch until I run out of this thread, which will be pretty quick. Oh yes, the, my website, Donna, is Penguin and Fish. Uh, the Embroider of the Month should be, there should be a link to that right on the main page. Or, or you can just type in Luna Moth or Embroider of the Month and it'll get you there in the, in the search. And uh, uh, yeah, it's our Embroidery, Embroidery of the Month this month. Uh, and there's a, a direct link in my profile as well. All right. So <laughs> I just kind of sped through that, but I just did like a loop and I went in the exact same hole, but I barely am pulling my needle through before I come up at, along the line and I'm coming up within that circle. So now I have, I don't have tons of thread here left, so um, you can really see that circle. I'm going to come up. And you can see that loop getting smaller and smaller as I pull and my thread catches the loop. And so there is our first um, stitch in the traditional, normal, uh, like my original way of doing uh, the chain stitch. Although I actually really kind of prefer the reverse chain stitch that I did here. We'll, we'll do that again. And actually I might be able to... Oh, no, I can't do that. Once I start this traditional chain stitch, I got to kind of do this the whole entire way around. I'm just going back in the exact same hole. Like, so I'm within that loop from the previous stitch, and then I'm going to come up. Sometimes I got to move the loop to be around the needle. There we go. So we'll do this whole wing, this upper wing, with the forward chain stitch again, or, or like the traditional chain stitch. And then um, reverse change the stitch here again, just so I can show the difference again. I am hoping to get both of these wings done and get started on the body today. So the body is um, the top part, like this little arc that's his head. Uh, that is going to be just a back stitch. And um, all these little lines, technically it's a seed stitch. I didn't actually put that in the pattern. All you all you have to do is just like make one single stitch. So each of these is just like one stitch and then you just move on to the next one. Um, so that's all there is to that. So once the, I think I'm gonna do one more stitch after this one and then I'm out of floss. Um, but after we do that body, maybe we'll do his face just, just to get it done. But I do want to move on and get all these inside bits done. So we have the running stitch. That's this dashed line. Uh, these little bits are combo back stitch and um, satin stitch. So we have like a back stitch for the bottom of the little eye shape. And then we filled in the shape for, for the top. So a, a tiny little satin stitch because um, those Luna moths have those little kind of eyeballs on their, on their wings. Okay, last stitch. 
because I'm out of thread. So to um, to finish up the, the traditional chain stitch, I have to tack down my loop. And I do that with a tiny little stitch on the other side. Otherwise, it pops up. You can kind of see it uh, popping up right there. And I'm just going to tack it down with a tiny, tiny stitch. And we're good to go. So let's flip that around. I'm going to weave in my ends again back and forth three times to lock it in. I'm trying to get as many different threads as I can. Oh, Amy says, my stitches are so consistent. <laughs> Thanks so much. A lot of repetition, I think, is helpful with that. Boop. All right. Let's get, oh wait, I had another another piece of thread, awesome. So this is my three strands um, from the beginning. Ooh, black, gray, gold, and tan. Yes, Donna, that would be so pretty. Oh, it'd be fun to do like a real gold, like like the um, metallic floss. Ugh, it would be so fun to do this with metallic floss. Hmm, I might have to think about doing that at some, at some point. It'd be fun to like make it into a patch. Or, or maybe I'll use the PDF pattern sometime and like shrink it really small. Even though Luna Moths are kind of big though. But it'd be fun to shrink it small and then like fill it in. Like, cause you know, the type of embroidery that I'm doing here is, is kind of more of a, a simple embroidery style where we just kind of go on the outlines. But you know, it's very popular right now to fill in the entire shape, uh, which is definitely a, a little bit um, heftier of a project for sure. It's going to take way longer um, to do that and, and I suppose a little bit more advanced. I think a beginner could still do it, but to like really, really get it like really like perfectly painted and you know with thread, that sort of look takes some some time and um, some practice. But it would be fun to to do that, like do a filled in version where we use some metallic thread and stuff. Ugh, that would be a beautiful like patch to put on a shirt or something. Okay, I kind of totally want to do that now. All right, I'm gonna start up uh, where I left off. And all I do for that is come up in my last loop as if I'm just, you know, left off there. Going back in the same hole within that last loop and come back up I already made that kind of arc right here. I'm also like holding it with my finger here because uh, as this thread, since I put them in the same hole as this ped thread pulls through, it's going to want to pull on this original one. But if I, if I hold it there with my thumb, then it doesn't do that. And I just let go when I get to about this point. And there we go. We're nice and started again. So that's, that's uh, covering up our little anchor stitch too from the previous row. So not all of these are all, all are perfectly even. <laughs> and I don't, uh, technically, I, I actually don't think your stitches really need to be perfectly even. A lot of times you'll see that on like nice, like long straightaways, I'll actually make my stitches a little bit bigger. And then once I get around like tight curves, I will sometimes make those um, smaller. Um, because we're really just stitching with straight stitches. So if I do smaller stitches around uh, the curves, then it appears more, more curve-like. So I don't, I don't, um, I don't go too much on uh, like that. Every stitch has to be exactly perfect, the same size. How are we doing? Ooh, I think we can still at least get the body started today. Be great to get these wings done though. I think we kind of did the two things um, that are gonna take the longest. Oh, I'm a little twisty here. I think that's thunder. I don't know if you guys can hear that. It, I thought it was an airplane going over. I actually first thought it was someone bringing their garbage down their driveway like a little rumble and then I thought it was an airplane but I think that's like some long rumbles like rain thunder rumbles <laughs> it was a little damp out when we got oops I went through my thread um 
when we got back here today, I, we drove home uh, all day today from my parents' house, which is exhausting. I don't know. I guess it's better than flying. Uh, not I guess. I 100% think it's better than flying, but man, that is just too much time in the car. And it's not even that long. It's like a five-hour drive, but still. <laughs> not a fan. Um... But I think we were able to skip all the rain on the way home, but I think it, it must have caught up to us here. I'm hearing those rumbles and a little bit of sprinkles. When we were visiting, though, there was a one day that it was like super duper windy and rainy. And I guess like a lot of the trees in the area fell down and uh, it was intense. But um, everything at my parents' house was fine and everything. But that was a good thunderstorm. And then when it was done, it was just like heat lightning. I think I was talking about this yesterday. It was just like heat lightning all across the sky. And we just uh, sat and watched it through the windows. It's been like since I was little, um, I feel like since I saw like heat lightning like that. Amy says, uh, five hours is still a long drive. Road gaze. Yeah, at least I, I didn't drive the whole thing myself. A lot of times I do, because then John can work in the car, and I don't know, I just kind of prefer... I don't work well in the car, um, so I just kind of prefer just driving and paying attention to that, but I only drove halfway this time, so that was that was nice, but yeah. I can feel it right at the, at the like, four-hour mark, I'm just like, oh man, I'm done. I gotta get out of here. But, but it's fine. Not nearly as much construction as there was when we left. Oh, we added a whole hour at least on uh, when we left on Friday because of just construction. And I don't know, we left kind of at rush hour, so that was stupid. But much better than that on the way home here. All right, we're getting there, almost out of thread again, so uh, I will have to get thread. Oh, but what I was saying is I think I, I don't remember if I finished saying it, but like I think I started on the two things that are going to take the longest uh, for for this, the um, fishbone stitch and uh, for the antenna and these wings, these the, the outside of these wings, like these chain stitches take a little bit of time, I think. Um, I think we'll zoom through the rest a little bit more. So let's see, tomorrow is Wednesday. I think we will have the body done and a good portion, like let's let's say all the the running stitches done. Let's let's say that we'll get all that done tomorrow. I'm just estimating. And then it'll be Thursday. So Thursday maybe we focus on satin stitches. So we'll do all the satin stitches here, and then this moon is also satin stitched. And then Friday we'll just Finish up all the extra little bits, like the text, the stars. I think I think we can still get it done by Friday, is, is what I'm thinking. And today, I, I still think we can get the body started. All right, I'm almost out of thread. I'm not going to make it around. So... Chain stitch does use up a lot of floss because you're basically making two stitches next to each other. Like, you know, there's thread there and thread there. So, uh, does it does use it up. But we'll be contrasting that with uh, the, the running stitch soon, which is the little dash, dash line, which I think probably uses the least amount of floss as far as stitches go. So that'll be nice. All right, I think I can get one more out of here. And then we'll weave in the end. All right, so I got to put my little anchor stitch down there again, that tiny, tiny stitch just on the other side to hold on the loop. A little baby stitch. And now I can uh, weave in the end here again.
So if anyone is thinking of like maybe picking up this PD pa PDF pattern or the kit, uh, we are having our special for uh, watching live tonight, and that's if, if you pr if you spend twenty dollars or more in the shop at penguinandfish.com. I will throw in a free mystery gift. And those mystery gifts are usually like ten dollars, but I put in um, sometimes up to like thirty dollars worth of stuff in there. All right, and there we go. Let's get a new piece of thread. We are out, so I'm gonna get another. Well, I guess this is the all in green. Left. Oh no, there's not. All these all these dotted lines are green. So I'm gonna keep with my longer piece. I'm like, yeah, maybe I don't need that much, but. I do. So let's get another 24 inches, roughly. And let's split it into the three strands again. Uh, so I'm gonna just bop the end of this again, just to separate uh, se separate the little threads so I can see them individually. And I'm just gonna pick one and zoop, zoom it on out. Let's get two more, zoop. And one more, zoop. Needs a sound effect each time. <laughs> and there we go. So I have my three strands over here, and then the three that I just pulled, I'll use those first. Just kind of getting them close together again. If I don't get it perfect, I'll just snip the ends, but I think that looks pretty good. Run my hand through it again. Oh, I got to hang out with Chad Kitty a little today before we left. That was nice. Bestest little kitty. Oh, you asked about the turkey work. Um, so I didn't see the question, but I'll show you. It's right here. I just cleaned up my space and I have all that stuff uh, kind of out still. Oops. Let me show you the turkey work. I still do want to do a video of that. Um, so I might get to that uh, this, this next week here, but check this out, you guys. So this is turkey work, which makes really like fuzzy little stitches. Here is, so like, here's the side, like, this is all just, like, fur. Uh, here is the finished uh, turkey work on the lion. We did his little tail, too. Little, we can swoop it, like, whichever way we want. <laughs> but this is it all, like, brushed out, and I, I trimmed it a little bit. I mean, there might be, like, one or two that are uh, sticking out kind of funny yet, but I did try and trim them all, all down. But ugh, it just turned out so freaking fun. I just love him so much. Uh, we aren't done with this one, so we are gonna come back to this. We have like the little roar to stitch yet and then the two, the, the letter L's. But ugh, isn't it cute? I need to do like a rainbow hair like stitch with this, I think, cause um, on, on TikTok, cause it's just so rainbowy and fun. But I, that's like, <laughs> my little my favorite thing so I have never done this much turkey work before uh, you can see the back uh, it's just like a bunch of little mash sti stitches together you can see some of the uh, backs of the turkey stitches here as well like it almost looks like little back stitches we just have row upon row of it but I just love how it turned out Fun. so that's the turkey work oh you're working on a ooh on baby says I'm working on a self portrait with bedhead using that stitch and you're just giggling oh you have to share that when you're done or just you know even in progress that is the funniest idea oh I hope it's working out for you that I love that stitch um, so much I barely ever do that like I said I that's the um, biggest piece I've done of turkey work but now I just kind of want to do like tons more of it um, I was getting getting the hang of it a little bit more as we went along with that lion piece last week. And I, I literally want, I want to do a whole quilt that has like blobs of turkey work like that all over it now. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm envisioning a more long, long-term projects for myself, which is not good right now. I got a bunch of other projects to finish, but we'll get there. But I just love how it turned out. Oh, you have a pixie cut and definitely have some crazy hair sometimes. Oh my gosh. I bet you the turkey work would be like so fun for it. even like you could trim it down to like a pixie cut. Um, like some could be long and some could be short. Like it's just fun. Oh, Lay, thanks so much. <laughs> the way I guess because it's so cute. I freaking love how um, that turned out. That took all week to do. <laughs> uh, so that was last week's project. 
And, you know, I'm here for an hour every evening, so we did that... Oh, I didn't do it Friday, so it took it took four hours to basically do that. Oh, but we did do the outline one day, so let's, let's call it three hours. Three hours to do all the turkey work on that piece. And... I'm like obsessed now. I need to I need to do more of it. I had so much fun with that. All right, I think I'm just trying to figure out what's the easiest direction to go and I'm just gonna keep going upside down here. Whatever is most comfortable, I feel like just rotate your hoop so your hands most comfortable. But yeah, the most I've done of turkey work be before that was just like little itty bitty tufts of like, you know, for for little animal tails here and there. Um, oh, or like l the little tuft on a on like a stocking cap uh, embroidery, um, something like that. But never like that much to cover all that. And we used tons of thread too, but it was all scrap floss. That's why it's all rainbowy. I was just using, I have like a bin. Oh, I was using all of the scrap floss. And I basically used up all the scrap floss from, from my ABC project where I'm stitching all the animals for of the alphabet. All the letters of the alphabet with an animal for each letter. Um, I used up all my scraps, plus I had to get some more random scraps out what am I, am I going up? Did I miss the line here? I feel like I just kept going. <laughs> Where is this stop, this thing? I think we'll just stop it right there. Actually, let me just see. I think I might have started going up a different bit. I can actually just pull this out and they'll all kind of come out. Oh, I guess that line did just go up to there. Oh no, this is, this is part of the, um, this is part of the, the side of the, the, um, the body. So I just kept going along a different line here. Yeah, this actually stops like right there. So let's, let's try that again. Rethread this. I'm just going to pull out this stitch and then, um, ooh, that one might got stuck a little bit go right there. We'll get it. There we are. All right, so I need to end it. Uh, it ends like right there. Actually, I was pretty close to it. All right, let's do that. Okay. So last stitch here, and then we will tack it down. I got a little ahead of myself there. Okay, so tacking it right here. Boop. And uh, I'm going to just jump down to here to start up again, but let's do that uh, reverse chain stitch again. Uh, hold on a sec. And I will um, do that. There we go, I'm back. Okay, so I'm going to do this uh, reverse chain stitch again, like how I did here. And uh, so again, the reverse chain stitch is basically what we just did, but literally in reverse. So I'm gonna start with that anchor stitch, which is that tiny, tiny stitch we did at the end. And we are just going to make that itty bitty bitty stitch right there. <laughs> Uh, and then I'm going to come up a little further down. So this will be like my first actual chain. I'm going to come up and I'm going to actually slide the needle underneath that stitch. I'm not going to go to the back at all. I'm just going underneath that stitch. We'll pull through and then I'm going to go down in the exact same hole there. And there's our first little uh, teardrop 
a reverse chain stitch there. So next up for the next one, I'm just gonna go down a stitch length and let's swoop underneath the whole stitch. So I'm still on the top of the fabric, but I've gone underneath the stitch, swoop through, and then back in the same hole that we started that last stitch. There we go. And let's just keep, keep on doing that swooping underneath. I love, love, love this reverse chain stitch so much. I don't, my thread doesn't fly everywhere. Um, I really need to do it more often. Oh my gosh, there's a little fly flying around here. Keep trying to grab it. Amy says, I like the reverse chain stitch better. Or I should say I'm a little bit more consistent doing it that way. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, a little bit more consistent doing that way. Yeah, you can kind of just like pick the next spot for the stitch maybe a little bit easier because you don't have thread flying everywhere. I do really like this. I think I, I think I officially like it better this way as well. I like showing it how to do it both ways, but yeah, this is a way more relaxing way of doing it. Just slide under. It's kind of three parts. You got to come up, slide under, and go back down. But your thread isn't getting in the way anywhere. I like it. So we'll swoop under, underneath here. And you can swoop from either side too. You don't have to be consistent with that, which is great. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm feeling like my thread's getting low. So we will um, finish up this thread and I have one more thread ready to finish up um, this green. And we'll, we'll finish it up with the reverse chain stitch as well. All right, and then I think we will jump to his body and start working on that for a little bit. I'd love to get a little bit of that done tonight. Again, I'm here for an hour. Uh, I started at 8.30 p.m. Central Time and I'll be here till about 9.30. Alright, so now I'm getting, uh, this is like a really tight curve, so I'm making my stitches a little smaller. Uh, so they sit around that curve. So it makes like a more of a curved shape versus just like a pointy shape. and about well I don't know I was thinking about three more stitches but we might be able to get one or two more I can tell my, my threads getting kind of twisty I should just let it dangle for a little bit like my my stitches look like there's a little twist to them but eh. that's a detail I'm not gonna worry too much about This would be really fun filling in the whole thing with this green too, uh, but that would take ages. So I do, I do like just, I like the quick win of just doing these outlines, even though, I mean, this outline is actually taking some time because it's this chain stitch, uh, which takes, takes a little bit of time, but I think it's worth it. I like the chain stitch. I got a lot more stitches out of here than I thought I would. I think we'll do like one more though. Because I need enough to weave it in as well. Alright, that looks good. Uh oh. I pulled pulled the uh, needle off of the thread. Let's re-thread that. Oh, I missed one. I Guess I'll have to trim. Oop. Okay. Oh, I 
it's hard to thread this little. I may have to get the needle threader out. Oh, got it. Good. All right, so I'm going to weave in back and forth in the backs of my stitches three times. looking pretty nice on the back yet, I'd say. Let's try and grab some stitches here. Ugh, I keep missing. There we go. All right, that looks good. All right, and... Let's get our last piece of green. So this is our other three strands that we pulled earlier. All right, we'll weave in the end in the same spot and come back up and finish this reverse chain stitch. Okay, so let's just come up at the next stitch. And we'll swoop underneath. So I'm tempted to just use up this green thread. Uh, so a bunch of these chain, or a bunch of these lines are running stitches with the green, uh, the same green, and I'm kind of tempted to just kind of get some of those done to use up this green before moving on to to the body. So I think I might do that. We'll do a few running stitches and then uh, hop up to the body. I still think we'll get started on the body even if we do that. Especially if I can get done with this all speedy like. Then we can use up the floss at least, though. Then I don't have a little tiny piece hanging out um, for later. I can just keep doing it. All right, I think maybe five, four more stitches to fill the rest of this line. And thanks for all your follows and shares tonight. Helping me get get the crafties out there in the world. So I appreciate that. All right, two more and we got it. All right, last stitch here. I'm gonna come up right underneath there. Swoop under and back and done all right and i think uh this this uh all the running stitches except for the ones right next to the wing on top here are green the the ones by the wing are are brown so we'll we'll do those later uh but i think i'm just gonna come up right here and uh for a running stitch i'm just going up and down so there's the first one I'm coming up for the next one and down and we're just making a little dashed line so traditionally though uh, I think the running stitch is more done using the sewing method right now I'm doing the stabbing method I'll show you how to do the sewing method on the next one um, but the stabbing method is where you go um, you stab and go all the way up then you go straight down go all the way down and come back up and you're just kind of uh, going all the way to the front and all the way to the back uh, with each with each stitch. The sewing method, and the sewing method um, is used traditionally with actually the chain stitch a lot and the running stitch. Um, all right, I'm going to just come up at where I'm going to start the next line. Uh, but I'm actually going to just like loosen my fabric in the hoop a little bit more because I think it's easier to do um, the sewing method 
but the sewing method is where you go in and out in the same motion. So I'm gonna go down at that next stitch, but I'm gonna come up right away at the stitch after that, all right? And then I'm, and with a running stitch, you can keep doing that for a few stitches. So down and up, down and up, and I think I can do one more, down and, and up. It's a little tough to get in there sideways, but there, I have like three stitches there and then I can push through all at once. And there we go, we still have that little dashed running stitch line. So I'll do that for the rest of these, but I, I kind of prefer just doing my little stabbing method. I think it's a little bit more accurate. Um, so I'm gonna probably switch back, but I can just go in and out, in and out, in and out. Actually, I can get like this whole thing done just about. It is pretty quick though, so there, I did a little bit better job on this one, so. And then pull on through, and there we go. So that, that we made a quick, I uh, made that line like super duper quick. But like I said, I'm gonna go back to my little stabbing method. So I'm just gonna tighten it back up in the hoop and do that. Uh, how many strands? Uh, so this is um, this is three strands that I'm using for this. So it is six strand embroidery floss. It's actually our own uh, brand. It's not DMC. It's it's our penguin and fish floss. Uh, but it's similar to DMC six strand embroidery floss. So DMC is just another brand, uh, but they also sell tons of, I'm going to travel to the next one up, up the edge here. Um, so I don't have like a big solid jump, but DMC is a brand that sells all sorts of different types of floss. And, uh, you know, one of the most popular obviously is the six strand embroidery floss. That's what you see in like Joann's and the whole aisle is full of, full of floss that is also six strand or stranded embroidery floss and that's the same as this it's where you can separate all the strands easily there's other types of floss like like pearl floss um that is all that's that's floss that you're not meant to separate it's all twisted really tightly and and it's just really pretty and shiny and, and i love that too uh, but it's not intended to be split whereas six strand or stranded uh, embroidery floss is meant to be split because I know you, you might know this already. I'm just kind of going down a, a path, but like, um, different numbers of strands give you different thicknesses of stitch. Uh, so it, it's always, it's the intention of this floss to be split into whatever you need. It. And this project is using three. Three is kind of my go-to. Um, when I want something a little, uh, more delicate, I'll use like two strands. And if I'm doing like thread painting or like getting super duper um, fancy and detailed, then I'll, I'll sometimes use one strand, but that's rare because I like these projects that I can just get done quick. Um, so I end up using like two or three strands, but this one's three. Oh, that's interesting. Um, yes, I'm a natural blonde says, I find that the stabbing method makes the, the stitches poofier. Oh, that's interesting. I suppose that makes sense. Um, it's like less, at least for this running stitch, it's less being dragged through the thread, maybe. Huh, I never thought about that. I'm gonna have to keep my eye on that. For me, I think the stabbing method, just cause that's how I learned and I'm used to doing it. I, I find I get more accuracy cause I can go like straight down. I can see the stitch go straight down and like kind of drag my needle to the exact right spot and come straight up. Um, so I think I can get good accuracy that way versus sewing method, you're coming in from the side. So um, I feel like I don't always get, like come up in the exact spot that I want because I'm kind of coming in from the side instead of like straight up. So I don't know, that's, that's my thought process there. But the more I practice with it, the better I get. And then I don't know. I'm getting a little bit more accurate doing the sewing method. But for all these little dashed lines, I'll do this. So I, I think I'm gonna actually make it to the top there, which is awesome. And then I'll then I'll weave in the end. So I did, was able to get like a whole wing stitched here. And I still do want to um, start on the, the body. We'll at least get the thread ready and get a few stitches in, I think. Uh, I wasn't expecting to do to do these running stitches, but had floss left, so I didn't want to cut it off. But that's the running stitch, the little, little dash line. And again, the sewing method is probably the more traditional 
way um, of doing a running stitch for sure. But I'm stuck doing the stabbing method way. I like that. All right, I'm going to just jump up over here. Got four more here, and then I'll weave in my end. And then we're done with Mr. Green thread for the evening. And we'll come back to these wings after I have like the rest of his body done. So this is just like a little extra that we got done tonight. There we go. So let's weave in that end and, um, oh, no problem. Oh, crafty. Uh, I'll weave in this end and that'll be enough of the green. And then the, the, um, body is done with the fawn color, that little tan color. Ooh, it's hard to weave an end when I'm this close to the hoop edge, so let's just go around once. And... There we go. Alright. Ooh, more thunder. Okay, there we are. I think that's looking great. Here is the fawn color. Get my... 24 or so inches off of here. Can you guys hear that rumble? I, I don't know if my mic picks it up or anything, but like, it's just like rumble, rumble, rumble. We didn't have any crack bangs yet, but it's rumbling. All right, let's get our three strands again. So I'm going to bop the, the top of these just to separate them a little bit so I can isolate them one at a time. And there we got the first one. Zoop. One. Uh, let's isolate another, two, and, oops, I think I got a little stuck in there, and three. Okay, get those guys back together, and, oop, I'm like losing them, I can't hold on to anything else tonight. Here we are. We'll get started with his body tonight. I think we can get the little back stitch done. All right, so uh, we have a little back stitch that goes around the top of his head, and then all these other little bits are just like little itty bitty straight stitches. Um, so we'll start with that little arc for the top of his head. So let's weave in here. One. So for the back stitch, um, so my starting line, uh, or the start of the line is down here. And uh, um, for a back stitch, you actually start uh, like a stitch away from from your start from the start of the line. So I'm going to go like right here. Then I'm going to go backwards to the beginning of the line, and we'll go down. So that's our first stitch. Uh, for the second stitch, we're going to come up a stitch length away right there and then I'm gonna go backwards again to the start of the stitch that came before so I'm going in the exact same hole of the last stitch and there we go we got our two little stitches there next one another like stitch length away I'm, I'm doing it like maybe a hair over an eighth of an inch for for these and then back towards the last one in the same hole. And we are just going to keep going around doing that. I like the back stitch. I think it gives like a little, it's, it's a nice outline. Um, it gives like a nice beaded look almost, I think. You can see each, each little stitch and it just looks cute.
and then for the um, rest of the body, like I said, we are just going to fill it in with all like just little single straight stitches. two more so again I made my stitches a little smaller when I went around the curve just to get more of that curved effect compared to like where I started they, they kind of are a little bit longer all right and that's it for the back stitch so I'll show you uh, just how we are gonna do the rest of this but we won't finish this tonight I'm gonna we'll end it here soon uh, but this we're just gonna do just a little straight stitch so come up at the first part of the line go down at the last so last side and then you just go to the next one have to move the thread a little bit out of the way to, to see where it starts so I'm just coming up at, at the stitch and going down at the end of the stitch that's that's it and it doesn't matter which one you go to next just gonna crisscross around here and stitch all these in so this is what's gonna make him look like like a little furry guy so cute all right you guys and I think oh it's just like so hard for me to like stop in the middle of like mid section and mid thread but I think I'm, I'm gonna stick my needle minder on here and uh, um, we are going to just call it there for the evening. And uh, we will pick up on his little body tomorrow. So let's see. So tomorrow, man, I feel way more confident about getting these wings done now too. So I think we'll, we'll start with his body. And let's do his face right away because why not? Uh, his face is brown. Um, and then these dotted lines are also brown. So maybe we'll like get the dotted line, then do his face, and then come back up for this, or dash line, the um, running stitch. So we'll get like all those at, in one batch. Um, and then maybe we'll go back to the rest of these green uh, running stitches. And then maybe we will start the little kind of eyeball shapes, the little um, like crescent moons in, in his uh, body there. Um, yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of invested in get, getting him completely done before doing uh, the stuff up here. So I think that's kind of where my brain's at now. But I think we're going to get pretty far tomorrow. Uh, we might even finish finish him up or get pretty close to finish uh, finishing his entire uh, this you know entire bottom piece up so we'll see so all right you guys so uh, thank you guys again for joining me uh, tonight it's nice to be back here uh, and we will like I said continue this little feller tomorrow I really like how he's turning out uh, it's been fun stitching him with you guys here for sure uh, and check it out if you haven't already. I appreciate you uh, checking out the website. And uh, I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a lovely, lovely uh, rest of your Tuesday. Good night.